now we'll discuss differentiability and before learning differentiability we have to understand the concept of tangent to a curve i'm pretty sure all of you know about a circle and its tangent so if we have a circle then a line which touches this circle at a point is called as tangent to this circle so if center is at o and this point is p then we join this this angle is 90 then we say this line say l is tangent to this circle now when we talk about tangency of a general curve say for example this one we need to take a more dynamic approach and for that what we generally do is we draw secant through a point say p and let the secant be pq now we'll calculate slope of pq this is say theta this is delta y and this is delta x we'll say simply this 10 theta is delta y upon delta x and then what we'll do is we'll move this q along this curve towards p so we'll keep redrawing these secants Now what we'll do is, in order to find this tangent, we'll investigate the limit of the slope of the secant PQ as Q approaches P. So we'll investigate this limit. Now when Q is as close as P, then we get the secant as tangent to this curve. So if this limit, it exists, we take this limit as slope of tangent at this point P and this limiting secant line through P is called as tangent to the curve at this point. Now when we say limit of the slope, we know that a limit exists if left hand limit is equal to right hand limit. So in this case, in order to check the existence of limit, we have to draw secant from the right and we also have to draw a secant from the left. So what I'll do is I'll extend this curve say this way and then I'll take a point Q on the left I'll draw the secant now this again is theta so this is 10 theta again delta y by delta x now we move this Q along the curve and draw secants and when this Q is sufficiently close to P, we'll get the limiting value of slope of the secant. So when limiting value of slope of secant from the left is same as limiting value of slope of secant from the right, then we'll say this value is the slope of tangent at P and this line is the tangent line to the curve at this point. Now when we say differentiability, we simply mean that at any point on the curve, whether we'll get a tangent or we'll not get a tangent. So this is the intuitive understanding of differentiability. So basically in differentiability, what we are concerned is this tangent at any point P exists or it does not exist. Now what we'll do is we'll formally define the derivatives and after defining derivative, we'll discuss differentiability. So if we have a curve, which is y equals fx, And we want to find slope of the tangent at this point, say P, whose coordinate is x1, y1, or in function notation, we can write this as x1 m, fx1, and we'll take this other point Q on the curve, whose coordinate is, say, x2, y2, or x2, and this value of y is fx2 and we'll draw this secant then we'll draw this right angle triangle now let this point be r if we have to find slope of the secant say m it will be given by 10 theta and it will be equal to qr upon tr now qr is 
y2 टू माइनस वाई वन एंड पी आर एस एक्स टू माइनस एक्स वन सो वी कैन राइट दिस स्लोप एज डेल्टा वाई अपॉन डेल्टा एक्स सो दिस इज योर डेल्टा वाई एंड दिस इज योर डेल्टा एक्स एंड वी कैन ऑल्सो राइट दिस एज एफ एक्स टू माइनस एफ एक्स वन अपॉन एक्स टू माइनस एक्स वन ना इन ऑर्डर टू गेट दिस स्लोप ऑफ टेन एट एट दिस पॉइंट पी वी हैव टू फाइंड दिस लिमिटिंग वैल्यू ऑफ क्यू वेन इट इज क्लोज टू पी सो वी हैव टू टेक दिस लिमिट वेन क्यू टेंस टू पी फॉर दिस एम इन दिस केस वेन क्यू इज वेरी क्लोज टू पी this distance delta x it is very small so we can also write this as this limit delta x tends to 0 delta y upon delta x and it will be equal to now when this difference delta x is very small then this point x2 is nearly approaching x1 so we can also write this as this limit x2 approaching x1 f x2 Minus f x one upon x two minus x one. Now there is another way to look at delta y upon delta x. It is rate of change of y with respect to rate of change of x. It is expressed as a derivative, and we write this as d y by d x. So this d y by d x graphically it represents slope of a tangent, and it also represents instantaneous rate of change of y with respect to x at this point p so dy by dx at this point p will be given by this limit x2 tends to x1 fx2 minus fx1 upon x2 minus x1 so this is how we define derivative at any point now for differentiability we check existence of this limit this limit x2 approaching x1 fx2 minus fx1 upon x2 minus x1 now x2 can approach x1 from the right as well as from the left now if x2 approaches x1 from the left then we'll say it is left hand derivative so we write it as lhd or derivative and if this q it approaches p from the right we say it is right hand derivative or rhd so we wish to check the existence of this limit at this point p which is when x is x1 now left hand derivative at p it is given by f dash x1 negative now this dash sign it represents derivative and this x1 negative it represents we are approaching x1 from the left and we can write this as this limit x2 approaching x1 negative fx2 minus fx1 upon x2 minus x1 now here we can use substitution so what we we'll do is we we'll let x2 as x1 minus h so we can write this left hand derivative f dash x1 negative it will be equal to this limit h tends to 0 positive f x1 minus h minus f x1 upon minus h and the same way for the right hand derivative we are going to write this as f dash x1 positive and it will be this limit x2 approaching x1 from the right fx2 minus fx1 upon x2 minus x1 again we'll use substitution let x2 equals 
x1 plus h. So this right hand derivative f dash x1 positive, it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive f x1 plus h minus f x1 upon h. So what we'll do is in order to check differentiability at a point, we'll have to find its left hand derivative and we'll have to find its right hand derivative. If both the limits are equal, finite and unique, then we'll say this function is differentiable at that point. So if we have a function, say y equals fx, and we have to check its differentiability at any interior point x equal to a, then what we'll do is we'll write its left hand derivative and its left hand derivative will be this f dash a negative and we'll write this as simply this limit h tends to 0 f a minus h minus f a upon minus h and we'll find its right hand derivative which is f dash a positive and we can write this as limit h tends to 0 positive f a plus h minus f a upon plus h. If both the limits are equal and they exist uniquely and finitely, then we'll say this function is differentiable at x equal to a. And in that case, this f dash a will be equal to this f dash a negative and f dash a positive. So for differentiability, this is what we need to do. Now intuitively as well as formally, when we have discussed differentiability, then a natural question that comes to mind is, when can a function will not have a tangent or when can a function be not differentiable? Now a function, it will not be differentiable if at any point we have two different tangents. That is, we get two different values of limit. Say for example, suppose we take this function. So we have this function, which is drawn like this. Now, obviously this function is continuous. And if we look at this point, say x equal to a. Now, if we draw a tangent from the left, then a tangent from the left will be drawn like this. So this is your left hand derivative. And if we draw a tangent from the right, it'll be drawn like this. So in this case, this left hand derivative will not be equal to right hand derivative. So whenever at any point we get more than one tangent, that means this function is not differentiable at that point. So basically in this case, a continuous function which has a corner or a cusp, say for example, this case. Now this point is x equal to a. This function will have two different tangents and hence it will not be differentiable. Now in case of a corner, it will have two different derivatives, left hand derivative and right hand derivative, but they are finite. In case of a cusp, if we draw the secant from the left, this angle, it keeps on increasing. So from the left, we get this slope as plus infinite. And when we draw the cusp from the right, we'll approach minus infinite. Now, another condition where this function will not be differentiable is when it will have a vertical tangent. So, we have a function, say this, and this is the point x equal to a. And if we draw a tangent at this point a, then this tangent it is a vertical line. And in this case, in this case, slope of tangent it will be either plus infinite or minus infinite from both the sides. So this first case is when we have two different left hand derivative and right hand derivative. And the second case is when we have a vertical tangent where we'll have the value of this limit as either plus infinite or minus infinite. And then there is this third case when a function is discontinuous. So say for example, we have this function Now this is the point P and this is x equal to A. 
Now from the right, we don't have any problem. At this function is right continuous at p. So if we draw a tangent from the right, it'll be drawn like this. So that's your right hand derivative. But if we draw the secant from the left hand side, we'll have to draw it like this. So in this case also, left hand derivative is not same as right hand derivative. So whenever a function is discontinuous, it is not differentiable at that point, which leads to discontinuity implies non-differentiability. So if a function is discontinuous at any point, then at that point, we do not even need to check differentiability. We can straight away say, because this function is discontinuous at this point, it will not be differentiable at that point. So that means discontinuity implies non-differentiability. However, continuity doesn't imply differentiability because in the previous cases, the function is continuous and still it is not differentiable. So if a function is continuous, it may be differentiable and it may not be differentiable. So here we have to check. So whenever a function is continuous at a point, we have to check its differentiability. But whenever the function is discontinuous, then we'll say it is non-differentiable. So basically, continuity is a necessary but not sufficient condition for differentiability. But differentiability is a sufficient condition for continuity. So if a function is differentiable, then it will be continuous. So differentiability implies continuity. So if a function is differentiable at a point, then it must be continuous at that point. So these are some facts which we'll use while solving problems. Now, other case when a function may not be differentiable is when we have oscillating value of these derivatives. So at times it will happen when we have either left hand derivative or right hand derivative or both as oscillating values, say between a to b. And we know that if the value of limit oscillates, limit does not exist. So in these case also, a function will not be differentiable. Now let us take an example. Say for example, we are given this function fx and this function fx is defined as e to the power 1 by x upon 1 plus e to the power 1 by x when x is unequal to 0 and it is 0 at x equal to 0 and says discuss continuity and differentiability of fx at x equal to 0. Now first we'll check its continuity at 0 and for that we'll find its left hand limit. So we'll find f0 negative and it'll be this limit x tends to 0 negative e to the power 1 by x upon 1 plus e to the power 1 by x. Now we let x as 0 minus h. So we write this as f0 negative and it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive e to the power minus 1 by h upon 1 plus e to the power minus 1 by h. Now, if we use direct substitution, we'll get this as e to the power minus infinite and we know that e to the power minus infinite is 0. So it'll be this 0 upon 1 plus 0, which is 0. So its left hand limit is 0. Now in the same way, we'll find its right hand limit, which is f0 positive and it'll be this limit x tends to 0 positive e to the power 1 by x upon 1 plus e to the power 1 by x. Now here we let x as 0 plus h. So we'll write f0 positive as this limit h tends to 0 positive e to the power 1 by h upon 1 plus e to the power 1 by h. Now when h tends to 0 positive e to the power 1 by h is e to the power infinite and e to the power infinite is infinite. So this is infinity upon infinity form. So what we'll do is we'll divide everything with e to the power 1 by h. So it'll be this limit h tends to 0 positive 1 upon e to the power minus 1 by h plus 1. 
Now, e to the power minus infinite is 0, so it will be this 1 upon 0 plus 1, which is 1. Now, in this case, left hand limit is 0 and right hand limit is 1. So, basically, left hand limit, it is not equal to right hand limit. So, we will have a non-removable discontinuity at x equal to 0. So, this function fx, it is discontinuous at x equal to 0. Now, we know that discontinuity, it implies non-differentiability. So, if function is discontinuous at any point, then at that point, it must also be not differentiable. So, without even solving, we'll say this function fx is not differentiable at x equal to 0. So, in case a function is discontinuous at a point, then we'll not even check differentiability. We'll straight away say this function is going to be non-differentiable at that point. Now, let us take another example. Say, for example, we are given this function fx, which is x sine 1 by x and x is unequal to 0 and it is 0 then x is equal to 0 now it says discuss the continuity and differentiability of this function at x equal to 0 now if we check its left hand limit it will be f0 negative which is limit x tends to 0 negative x sine 1 by x and if we take this substitution let x equals 0 minus h we'll get this as this limit h tends to 0 h sine 1 upon h now from direct substitution it'll be this 0 into sine infinite which is oscillating value between minus 1 and plus 1 which is 0 so in this case left hand limit is 0 and the same way we find its right hand limit will be f0 positive which is limit x tends to 0 positive x sine 1 by x and which again is 0 into oscillating value between minus 1 and plus 1 which is 0. Now f0 negative is 0, f0 positive is 0 and f0 is also 0 that means this function fx it is continuous at x equal to 0. Now discontinuity implies non-differentiability but continuity it doesn't imply differentiability so when a function is continuous at that point it may be differentiable and it may not be differentiable so here we have to check differentiability so now we write its left hand derivative now left hand derivative will be f dash 0 negative which is this limit h tends to 0 f 0 minus h minus f0 upon minus h. Now this is limit h tends to 0 and it will be this minus h sin 1 upon minus h minus f0 is 0 upon minus h. Now this minus h will cancel. So this is limit h tends to 0 positive minus sin 1 by h and which is an oscillating value between minus 1 and plus 1. So this limit, it does not exist. That means this function fx is not differentiable at x equal to 0. So it is continuous at x equal to 0, but it is not differentiable at x equals 0. Let us take another example. Suppose it says, we are given this function fx, which is greatest linear function of cos pi x when x is less than equal to 1 and this is 2 times fraction part of x minus 1 when x is greater than 1. Now we have to discuss its differentiability at x equal to 1. Now first we will check its continuity. Now f1 negative will be this limit x tends to 1 negative greatest linear function of cos pi x. Now we let x as 1 minus h so it will be this limit 
h tends to 0 positive in greatest linear function of cos pi 1 minus h we can write this as this limit h tends to 0 positive now this is cos pi minus pi h now cos pi minus theta is minus cos theta so it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive greatest new function of minus cos pi h now this pi h is nearly 0 and cos 0 positive is value lying between 0 and 1 and with this minus it will be this value lying between minus 1 and 0 so its greatest new function will be minus 1 now we find f1 positive it will be this limit x tends to 1 positive 2 times fraction part of x minus 1 now we let x as 1 plus h so here it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive 2 times fraction part of 1 plus h minus 1 which is this limit h tends to 0 2 times fraction part of h minus 1 now fraction part of h is h so it will be this limit h tends to 0 2h minus 1 which is minus 1 so in this case left hand limit is minus 1 and right hand limit is also minus 1 now if we look at function value left hand limit is equal to right hand limit and it is equal to function value at 1 so that means this function fx it is continuous at x equals 1 now since the function is continuous at 1 we have to check its differentiability so whenever we have continuity we have to check for differentiability now its left hand derivative will be f dash 1 negative and we can add this as this limit h tends to 0 positive f 1 minus h minus f 1 upon minus h so it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive now f 1 minus h it is less than 1 so we will go to this greatest linear function so it will be this greatest linear function of cos pi 1 minus h minus and f1 is minus 1 upon minus h now the theta function value is minus 1 so it will be this minus 1 plus 1 upon minus h which is 0 and we know that this greater function it doesn't take a limiting value it takes exact value so value of this derivative it is 0 now we find its right hand derivative f dash 1 positive will be this limit h tends to 0 f1 plus h minus f1 upon h now it will be this limit h tends to 0 and this is 2 times fraction part of 1 plus h minus 1 minus and f1 is minus 1 upon h Now here minus 1 and plus 1 will cancel and this is limit h tends to 0 2 times fraction part of h upon h and when h is 0 positive fraction part of h is simply h so value of this limit is 2. So in this case left hand derivative is 0 and right hand derivative is 2 that means this function fx is not differentiable at x equal to 1 so at x equal to 1 it is continuous but not differentiable. Now we'll discuss differentiability at endpoints. So if we have function say y equals fx, which is defined in this interval a to b. So suppose we have this function y equals fx, and then we have these points x equal to a and x equal to b now these points a and b they are called as end points now on the left of a we know nothing about this function so at this point a 
we'll just discuss right hand derivative so at a we'll check its right hand derivative so here we just need to find f dash a positive which is right hand derivative at x equal to a and it'll be equal to this limit h tends to 0 f a plus h minus f a upon h and if we look at x equal to b nothing is known about the function on the right so at the end of this interval at x equal to b we will only check its left hand derivative so we will check left hand derivative at b which is f dash b negative and will be this limit h tends to 0 f b minus h minus f b upon minus h so basically at the start of this interval we are checking its right hand derivative and at the end of this interval we are checking its left hand derivative and if we have to check differentiability of function fx in closed interval a b then this function will be differentiable in a b if fx is differentiable at all interior points in this open interval a b and limit at these end points they exist that is this limit f dash a positive which is limit h tends to 0 f a plus h minus f a upon plus h and this left hand derivative at b which is limit h tends to 0 f b minus h minus f b upon minus h they exist at the end point now here we have two questions this first question is we are given this function fx which is x into e to the power of greatest near function of x plus mod x minus 2 upon greater function of x plus mod x when x is unequal to 0 and we are given that f0 is minus 1. Now we need to check differentiability of this function at x equals 0. Now for differentiability we will first need to check its continuity. So we will find its left hand limit which is f0 negative and it will be this limit x tends to 0 negative x into e to the power of greatest of function of x plus mod x minus 2 upon greatest of function of x plus mod x we let x as 0 minus h so it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive now this is minus h and will be e to the power greater function of minus h plus mod of minus h is h minus 2 upon greatest of function of minus h plus mod of minus h is plus h so it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive minus h into now greater function of minus h is minus 1 so it will be e to the power minus 1 plus h minus 2 upon minus 1 plus h now we put this limit it is equal to 0 so f0 negative is 0 and we are given that f0 is equal to minus 1 that means this function fx it is discontinuous at x equal to 0 and discontinuity it implies non-differentiability so this function is non-differentiable at x equal to 0 now here the question is for this function we need to find its left hand derivative right hand derivative now we have to check its continuity now f0 negative it will be this limit h tends to 0 
Now this is minus h and this is 1 plus e to the power minus 1 by h. We'll check its form. So this is 0 plus 1 and e to the power minus infinite is 0. So this is 0 and f 0 positive it will be this limit h tends to 0 and this is h upon 1 plus e to the power 1 by h. Now this is 0 upon infinity which is again 0 and it is given that f0 is 0. So it is continuous at x equals 0. Now we'll find its left hand derivative. Now f dash 0 negative it will be this limit h tends to 0. Now this is minus h upon 1 plus e to the power minus 1 by h minus 0 upon minus h. Now this minus h and minus h will cancel. Now this is 1 upon 1 plus 0. So it's left hand derivative is 1 and we find its right hand derivative it will be this limit h tends to 0 h upon 1 plus e to the power 1 by h minus 0 upon h. Now this h will cancel. Now this is 1 upon and e to the power infinite is infinite. So it will be 0. So its left hand derivative is 1 and right hand derivative is 0. Now the question is we are given this function fx which is x into e to the power minus 1 upon mod x plus 1 upon x when x is n equal to 0 and it is 0 when the value of x is 0. Now we have to test its continuity and differentiability at x equals to 0. Now if we look at its left hand limit it will be f 0 negative and we can write this as limit h tends to 0 and it will be this minus h e to the power minus 1 upon now mod minus h is plus h and here will be this 1 upon minus h now plus h and minus h will cancel so this is e to the power 0 which is 1 and 1 into 0 is 0 so left hand limit is 0 now we will find its right hand limit it will be this limit h tends to 0 now this is h e to the power minus 1 upon h plus 1 upon h which is this limit h tends to 0 h into e to the power minus 2 upon h. Now this is 0 into e to the power minus infinite which is also 0. So this is 0. So for this function f0 negative is equal to f0 positive and it is equal to f0. Therefore this function is continuous at x equal to 0. Now we'll test its differentiability. Now f dash 0 negative it will be this limit h tends to 0. Now f minus h will be this minus h e to the power minus 1 upon h minus 1 upon h minus f 0 upon minus h. Now this minus h and minus h will cancel and this h and h will also cancel. So this is e to the power 0 and e to the power 0 is 1. So left hand derivative of this function at 0 is 1. Now we find its right hand derivative. It will be this limit h tends to 0. Now this is h e to the power minus 1 upon h plus 1 upon h minus 0 upon h. Now this h and h will cancel and this is this limit h tends to 0 e to the power minus 2 upon h which is e to the power minus infinite and e to the power minus infinite is 0. Now in this case left hand derivative is not equal to right hand derivative and therefore this function is not differentiable at x equal to 0. So it is continuous but not differentiable at x equals 0. Now here the question is we need to discuss differentiability of this function at x equals to e. Now it is given that this fx is x minus e to the power minus to the power 1 upon e minus x. Now we will check its continuity first. So we will write f e negative as this limit h tends to 0 and then we we'll write x as e minus h. So it will be this minus h into 2 to the power minus 2 to the power 1 upon 1 upon minus h. Now this is 0 into now this is 2 to the power minus infinite. 2 to the power minus infinite is 0 and 2 to the power 0 is 1. So its left hand limit at e is 0. Now right hand limit at e it will be this limit h tends to 0. Now this is e plus h. Now we can write this as h into 2 to the power minus 2 to the power 1 upon 1 by h 
Now this is 2 to the power infinite, which is infinite, and 2 to the power minus infinite is 0. So this is 0 into 0. This again is 0. And we are also given that f equals 0. Therefore, this function is continuous at x equals e. Now we have to check its differentiability. Now if we find f dash e negative, it will be this limit h tends to 0. Now f e minus h will be this minus h 2 to the power minus 2 to the power minus 1 upon h minus 0 upon minus h. Now this minus h will cancel. Now this is going to be 2 to the power minus infinite 0 and 2 to the power 0 is 1. So this is 1. And if we find its right hand derivative, it will be f dash e positive, which is limit h tends to 0. Now will be this h 2 to the power minus 2 to the power 1 by h minus 0 upon h. Now h and h will cancel. Now this is 2 to the power infinite, 2 to the power infinite is infinite and 2 to the power minus infinite is 0. So in this case left hand derivative is not equal to right hand derivative therefore this function fx is not differentiable at x equals e. And that is the answer to this question. Now here the question is we are given that fx minus fy is less than or equal to x minus y cube. Now we can write this as mod of fx minus fy upon x minus y it is less than or equal to mod of x minus y square we will take this limit y tends to x both sides this is limit y tends to x now this is mod of f dash x and is less than or equal to 0 a mod function cannot be negative so from here we get f dash x equals 0 that means this fx is a constant function this is what we need to prove in this question now the question is Find the left hand derivative of fx at x equals to k if k is an integer. Now we need to find f dash k negative. I will be equal to this limit h tends to 0 positive f k minus h minus f k upon minus h. Now this is limit h tends to 0 positive f k minus h will be this greatest scale function of k minus h and then sine will multiply this pi inside so it will be this sine k pi minus pi h minus now f k sine k pi is 0 if k is an integer divide by minus h now this is limit h tends to 0 now greatest new function it doesn't take a limiting value it is an exact value greatest new function of k minus h is simply k minus 1 and if we look at this sign n pi minus theta it will be sine theta if n is odd and it will be minus sine theta if n is even so basically we can write this as minus 1 to the power n plus 1 into sine theta so here it will be minus 1 to the power k plus 1 into sine pi h whole divided by minus h. Now this minus 1 will cancel once. It will multiply and divide everything with pi. Now this is sine 0 upon 0 form. Standard limit 1. So left hand derivative of this function fx at x equals k will be minus 1 to the power k into k minus 1 pi and that's your option a now question number two is let r denote the set of real numbers find all the functions f r to r satisfying mod of fx minus fy and it is equal to 2 x minus y now taking x as x plus h and y as x we can prove that this function is a continuous and differentiable function now, if we write this function as fx minus fy upon x minus y mod equals to, and if we take this limit, y tends to x, then we'll get mod of f dash x, it is equal to 2, or we can write f dash x equals plus or minus 2. Now, we'll integrate this function, we can write this as fx equals plus minus 2x plus c. 
Now here the question is, we are given this function fx, which is defined as x sine 1 by x sine 1 upon x sine 1 by x if x is unequal to 0 and x is unequal to 1 upon r pi and it is also given that f0 equals f 1 upon r pi and it is equal to 0. Now we need to check its continuity in the interval 0 to 1. Now the points where this function could be discontinuous is at x equals to 0 because we have this 1 by x and also at the points where sine 1 by x is 0 because then again it will be 1 upon 0. So here we get 1 upon x equals r pi or x is equal to 1 upon r pi. So we have to check for continuity at 0 and at 1 upon r pi. So first we'll check its continuity at x equal to 0. Now if we find this limit x tends to 0 fx will be this limit x tends to 0 and this is x sine 1 by x into sine 1 upon x sine 1 by x. Now, first we'll check its form. Now, this is 0 into, now this is sine infinite and sine infinite is oscillating value between minus 1 and plus 1. And then here this is sine. Now, this is 1 upon 0 and oscillating value. So, here it will be this oscillating value from minus infinite to plus infinite and value of sine will always lie between minus 1 and plus 1. So, this is 0 into something finite and 0 into anything finite is simply 0. And it is given that f0 is equal to 0. It means that this function fx, it is continuous at x equals 0. Now, if we look at at x equals 1 upon r pi, then we are going to write this limit as limit x tends to 1 upon r pi fx and there will be this limit x tends to 0 x sine 1 by x into sine 1 upon x sine 1 by x and this is 1 upon r pi. Now again we will put the value so this is 1 upon r pi into now this is sin r pi and sin r pi it is 0 into and this value will be 1 upon r pi upon 0 and there will be sin infinite and sin infinite is oscillating value between minus 1 and plus 1. Now 0 into something finite is 0. So this limit is 0 and we are given that f 1 upon r pi it is also 0 that means this fx is continuous at x equals 1 upon r pi. So if it is continuous at 0 and if it is continuous at all 1 upon r pi, that means this function fx, it is continuous in 0 to 1. So this fx is continuous in this interval 0 to 1. Now we need to check its differentiability at x equals 0. Now for its differentiability, if we check its derivative, it will be this limit h tends to 0 and suppose we will find its right hand derivative, it will be this h sine 1 by h into sine 1 upon h sine 1 by h minus 0 upon h. Now this h and h it will cancel. Now we will put this limit. Now sin infinite is oscillating value between minus 1 and plus 1 and here also this is sin infinite which again is oscillating minus 1 to plus 1. So this f is 0 it is an oscillating value and if it is an oscillating value this limit it does not exist that means fx is 
not differentiable at x equals 0. And that is the answer to this question. Now here the question is, we are given this function fx which is x square more cos pi upon 2x if x is an equal to 0 and it is 0 at x equals to 0. That means f0 is 0. Now first is show that f dash 0 exists and find its value. Now clearly this function is continuous at 0 because if we look at f0 it is 0 and f0 positive and f0 negative it will be this 0 into and then cos infinite and cos infinite is oscillating and since there is this mod sign, it will oscillate between 0 and 1 and 0 into anything finite is 0. So, value of left hand limit and right hand limit it is also 0. That means fx is continuous at x equals 0. Now, we need to find f dash 0. So, first we will find its left hand derivative. Now, left hand derivative will be f dash 0 negative will be this limit h tends to 0 h square mod cos pi upon 2h upon minus h. Now this h will cancel once. Now this is again 0 into cos infinite and it will be 0. And if we check its right hand derivative will be f dash 0 positive which is limit h tends to 0 and this is h square cos pi upon 2h upon h. Now this h and h will cancel. So which again is 0 into oscillating value 0 to 1 which is 0. So f dash 0 exists and its value is 0. That's your a part. Now in the b part it says show that f dash 1 by 3 does not exist. Now if we look at the second part. That is, we need to check its differentiability at 1 by 3. So now we look at 1 by 3 negative. Now it will be this limit h tends to 0 and here it will be 1 by 3 minus h whole square into mod cos pi and this is 2 into 1 by 3 minus h minus now f1 by 3 if we look at f1 by 3 f1 by 3 will be x square which is 1 by 9 into mod cos 3 pi by 2 and mod cos 3 pi by 2 is 0 so this is 0 divided by minus h now what we'll do is we write this as limit h tends to 0 we don't have a problem with this expression because this is finite. So this is 1 by 9 and we'll take this 1 upon 3 out. So we can write this as cos 3 pi by 2 and this is 1 minus 3h mod minus h. Now we'll write this as limit h tends to 0 1 by 9 mod cos 3 pi by 2 and we'll use binomial expansion of 1 minus 3 h to the power minus 1 whole divided by minus h. Now this is limit h tends to 0 1 by 9 and this is mod cos 3 pi by 2 and then this is 1 plus 3 h and higher powers upon minus h. Now cos 3 pi by 2 plus theta is sin theta. So it will be this limit h tends to 0, 1 by 9 and sin 9 pi h by 2 and higher powers upon minus h. Now, so basically f dash 1 by 3 negative is minus pi by 2. Now we look at its right hand derivative. So it will be this 3 plus 1 by 3 plus h 1 by 3 plus h plus h 
here also will be this plus h 1 by 3 plus h this is plus now here will be this minus 1 minus 3 h and here will be this plus and then cos 3 pi by 2 minus theta is minus sin theta so there will be this minus sign but then we have this mod so it won't make a difference so it will be this plus sign so in that case the value of this limit will be pi by 2 so it's the right hand derivative at 1 by 3 it is plus pi by 2 and since left hand derivative is not equal to its right hand derivative that means f dash 1 by 3 does not exist and the third part says for what values of x f dash x fail to exist now since we have this mod function and we know that this mod it is not defined when fx is zero so this function it won't be defined for all the points where cos pi by 2x it is equal to zero now cos is zero at odd multiple of pi by 2 so clearly we get this x is 1 upon 2n plus 1 so for this function f dash x fail to exist at all point where x is 1 upon 2n plus 1 where n belongs to an integer now here we have four questions one two three and four now we'll start with this first one and it says let fx be defined on minus a to plus a with a greater than zero and assume that f is continuous at x equals to zero that means f zero minus h is equal to f zero plus h and it will be equal to f zero it is given that limit x tends to zero fx minus f kx upon x it is equal to alpha where k lies between zero and one then compute f dash zero positive and f dash zero negative and comment on differentiability of f at x equals zero now what we'll do is we'll first solve this limit now if we take its left hand limit it'll be this limit h tends to zero and this is f minus h minus f k into minus h upon minus h and this value will be alpha now what we'll do is we'll subtract f0 and we'll add f0 now we can write this as this limit h tends to 0 now this is f minus h minus f0 upon minus h and then if we take this minus common it'll be this limit h tends to 0 f minus kh minus f0 upon minus h and this is equal to alpha now this is nothing but this is left hand derivative at 0 so it'll be this f dash 0 negative and here if we multiply and divide it with k now this again is 0 minus kh minus f0 upon minus kh so it'll be left hand derivative at 0 so this is k into f dash 0 negative that is equal to alpha so from here we can say well your f dash 0 negative is alpha upon 1 minus k now in the same way we will find its right hand limit now for this right hand limit we can write limit h tends to 0 f h minus f k h upon h now we'll subtract f0 and add f0 and this is equal to alpha so it'll be this limit h tends to 0 f h minus f0 upon h minus this limit h tends to 0 f k h minus f0 upon h it is equal to alpha now here again we'll multiply and divide it with k now these are right hand derivative at 0 so it'll be f dash 0 positive minus k into f dash 0 positive it is equal to alpha so value of f dash 0 positive will be alpha upon 1 minus k and since they are equal f dash 0 exists and the value of f dash 0 will be alpha upon 
1 minus k. And therefore, this function is differentiable at x equals 0. Now, here the question is, if f is defined from r to r and it is differentiable at c belongs to r and fc is 0, it says if gx it is equal to mod of fx, then we have to discuss differentiability of gx. Now, if we look at g dash c negative, it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive mod of f c minus h minus mod of f c upon minus h. Now we are given that f c is 0. So we can write this as this limit h tends to 0 positive mod of f c minus h upon minus h or we can write this as this limit h tends to 0 minus and we will take this h inside so it will be this f c minus h and then minus f c because f c is 0 we can just add or subtract f c upon h now this is left hand derivative at c so this is equal to minus mod of f dash c and the same if we write g dash c positive it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive mod of f c plus h minus mod of f c upon plus h now this is 0 we can write this as limit h tends to 0 mod of f c plus h minus f c upon h which is mod of f dash c now this function is differentiable then both these values they must be equal so minus mod of f dash c must be equal to mod of f dash c and it is only possible if f dash c is 0 so this gx will be differentiable if f dash c is 0 and that's your option d now the question is we are given this function fx now we need to check its continuity and differentiability at x equals 0 now when x is unequal to 0 we are given this function fx as this log base is a and this is a mod of greatest new function of x plus greater function of minus x this mod whole to the power x into and here will be this a to the power 2 upon greatest integral function of x plus greater function of minus x by mod x minus 5 upon 3 plus a to the power 1 upon mod x when mod of x is unequal to 0 and a is greater than 1. Now what we will do is we will take this limit x tends to 0 fx. Now we know that when x approaches 0 it is not exactly equal to 0 that means it is not an integer and if x is not an integer then greater function of x plus greatest integer function of minus x it is nothing but minus 1. So we will simplify this a bit we will write this as this limit x tends to 0 and it will be this log a and it will be this a to the power x and here it will be this minus 1 so a to the power minus 2 mod x minus 5 and it will be this 3 plus a to the power 1 upon mod x now log a base a is 1 so it will be this limit x tends to 0 x into a to the power minus 2 mod x minus 5 upon 3 plus a to the power 1 upon mod x so and that is the definition of this function in the neighborhood of x equal to 0 so we'll use this definition for all of the parts now we calculate this limit this is 0 now a to the power 0 is 1 and 1 minus 5 is 4 and here this value will be 3 plus 
the eighth power infinite is infinite and zero upon infinity is zero. And we are given that f zero is zero. That means this function f x it is continuous at x equals zero. And as we have this x here, which is zero, we have not taken left hand limit and right hand limit separately. We could have done that, but then we would have end up getting the same answer. Now we need to check its differentiability at x equals zero. Now if we check its left hand derivative, it will be f dash zero negative, which is given by this limit. H tends to zero. Now f minus h so will be this minus h a to the power minus 2h minus 5 upon 3 plus a to the power 1 by h minus 0 upon minus h. Now this minus h and minus h it will cancel. Now we put this limit this is minus 4 upon a to the power infinite is infinite. So it will be 0. So left hand derivative at 0 is 0. In the same way, if we find its right hand derivative, will be this limit h tends to 0, h a to the power minus 2h minus 5 upon 3 plus a to the power 1 by h minus 0 upon h. Now h and h will cancel. So again, this value will be 0. So in this case, this function is differentiable at 0, its value is 0. So answer to this question is this function is continuous and differentiable at 0 and that's your option B. Now here the question is we are given this function fx which has this definition when x is an equal to pi by 2 and f pi by 2 is 3 then we need to find whether f is continuous or differentiable at pi by 2. Now we know that at pi by 2 value of sin x is 1 but at both pi by 2 negative and pi by 2 positive sin x is less than 1 and if sin x is less than 1 then sin x will be greater than sin cube x. So for this function in both left hand and right hand neighborhood of pi by 2 sin x is greater than sin cube x and therefore mod of sin x minus sin cube x will be equal to sin x minus sin cube x. So we let this function fx in the neighborhood of x equal to pi by 2 as greatest in the function of 2 sin x minus sin cube x plus sin x minus sin cube x upon and this is 2 sin x minus sin cube x and then minus sin x plus sin cube x. Now this is 2 sin x plus sin x so it will be this 3 sin x. So it will be 3 sin x minus sin cube x and here also we have sin x minus sin cube x. Now I will cancel. So in the neighborhood of pi by 2 this function is 3. So f pi by 2 negative is equal to f pi by 2 positive that is equal to f pi by 2 and it is 3. Basically it is a constant function and if it is constant function in the neighborhood of pi by 2 it is both continuous and differentiable. So answer to this question is this option A. And this question we are given this function fx and what we will do is we will take x minus 1 common. So we can write this as x minus 1 into x square plus sin x and then we have this arbitrary function g which is defined on r to r and it is defined f into g as this product fx into gx. Now this first option is if gx is continuous at x equal to 1 then f into g is differentiable at x equal to 1. Now if g is continuous at 1 then g 1 minus h is equal to g 1 plus h and it is equal to g1. Now we will check left hand derivative at 1. So it will be this fg dash 1 negative. So it will be this limit 
h tends to 0 and this is f 1 minus h g 1 minus h minus f 1 g 1 upon minus h now now f 1 is 0 so it will be this 0 now f 1 minus h upon minus h this is f dash 1 negative so it is f dash 1 negative and this is g 1 and this function f x it is differentiable so we can write this as f dash 1 into g 1 in the same way we can write f g dash 1 positive as limit h tends to 0 and it will be f 1 plus h g 1 plus h now f 1 again will be 0 upon h now f 1 plus h upon h is again f dash 1 positive into g 1 now f x is continuous and differentiable so it will be f dash 1 into g 1 and both of them they are equal that means this f into g is differentiable at x equal to 1 now this option b is if it is differentiable in 0 to 1 then g is continuous at x equal to 1 now this may not be necessarily true and for this what we will do is we will take an example which shows this may not always be true so we will define gx as 0 if x is equal to 1 and it is 1 when x is unequal to 1 now if we find f g dash x it will be simply f dash x at x equal to 1 so in this case f g dash it exists but then this g x it is not a continuous function so from counter example we can say this b is not necessarily true now see is if g is differentiable at x equal to 1 then f into g is differentiable at x equal to 1 now this is standard result if f is continuous differentiable g is continuous differentiable then the product is also continuous and differentiable so that means this option c is correct and d is if f into g is differentiable at x equal to 1 then g is differentiable at x equal to 1 now this is clearly not true because if it is discontinuous then it is also not differentiable so the correct options are a and c now the question is we are given this function fx which is defined as mod of fx minus fy that is less than equal to 2 times mod of x minus y to the power 3 by 2 now we can rearrange this as fx minus fy upon x minus y and it is less than equal to x minus y to the power 1 by 2 and what we will do is we will take this limit y tends to x in both sides now this is f dash x and will be less than or equal to 0 now modulus cannot be negative so from here the only condition that we get is f dash x equals to 0 that means this fx it is a constant function now if it is constant its value is same at all points so if f0 is 1 this fx is simply 1 so we have this constant function fx which is 1 now we have to find this integral which is from 0 to 1 and then f square x and this is simply 1 dx and 1 dx is 1 and that's your option c now here the question is we are given a differentiable function f satisfying f 1 by n equals 0 for all n greater than or equal to 1 then which of the following is correct now we know that f1 is equal to f1 by 2 equals f 1 by 3 and it goes on till f1 by n where n is all natural numbers that means as we are approaching 0 in the neighborhood of 0 there are many points which are having this value as 0 because it is given that f1 by n is 0 and since this function is continuous and differentiable basically in the neighborhood of 0 this function fx it will be 0 and if it is 0 then its derivative will also be 0 so f0 must be 0 and f dash 0 must also be 0 and that's your option b another way to look at it is if we take this limit n tends to infinite f 1 by n and we know that this is 0 so we can write f 0 equals to 0 and f dash 0 is going to be 
this limit h tends to 0 f h upon h now we we'll choose this h so that it hops between 1 upon n 1 upon n minus 1 so in this case this f0 will be 0 then again we'll end up getting the same answer f0 is 0 and f0 is 0 now question number 8 is let f be a real value differentiable function on the real line such that limit x tends to 0 fx upon x square exists and is finite prove that f dash 0 is 0. Now it is given that f is a differentiable function so that means it is continuous also. Now if the function is continuous we can write f0 as limit x tends to 0 fx now we can write this limit as limit x tends to 0 x square into fx by x square so it will be limit x tends to 0 x square into limit x tends to 0 fx by x square now this is finite and it is 0 0 into finite is 0 so value of f0 is 0 now if f0 is 0 we can find f is 0 as this limit h tends to 0 f h minus f 0 upon h now f 0 is 0 so we can write this as limit h tends to 0 h into f h upon h square now f h upon h square is finite and h is 0 so from here we can say f does 0 it must be 0 now question number 13 is an even function has left derivative at x equals 0. So that means f dash 0 negative it is 5. Now we need to find its right hand derivative. We know that a function is even if f of minus x is equal to fx. Now we will differentiate this function we can write f dash minus x into minus 1 is equal to f dash x. Now we will replace x with 0 plus h then we can write minus f dash minus h is equal to f dash plus h now this is f dash 0 negative and this is f dash 0 positive so f dash 0 positive will be minus and then f dash 0 negative which is left hand derivative and it is minus 5 so right hand derivative of fx at x equals 0 will be minus 5 and that's your option number c now the question is we are given this function fx which is x square mod of cos pi x when x is unequal to 0 and it is 0 when x is 0. Now we need to check its differentiability at both x equal to 0 and x equals 2. Now at x equal to 0 its limits will be 0 into cos infinite and cos infinite is oscillating value and since we have this mod between 0 to 1 0 into anything finite is 0 so this function is continuous at x equal to 0 and this function is also continuous at x equal to 2 because this x square and mod cos they are all continuous functions now we will check differentiability at 0 now f dash 0 negative will be this limit h tends to 0 positive now f 0 minus h will be this h square and then mod cos pi by minus h upon minus h now I'll cancel now this again is 0 into cos infinite which is 0 and the same way f dash 0 positive will be this limit h tends to 0 positive and this is h square mod cos pi by h upon h now this h and h will cancel this again is 0 into cos infinite which is 0 so this function is differentiable at x equals 0 now we have to check its differentiability at x equals 2 now if we look at f2 f2 will be 2 square mod cos pi by 2 and cos 90 is 0 now if we look at its left hand derivative f dash 2 negative it will be this limit h tends to 0 2 minus h whole square mod of cos 
pi upon 2 minus h minus 0 upon minus h. Now pi by 2, 2 minus h will be greater than pi by 2. That means this angle it is in second quadrant and in second quadrant cos is negative. So it will be this limit h tends to 0, 2 minus h whole square and then it will be this minus cos pi upon 2 minus h upon minus h. This minus and minus will cancel. Now what we will do is we will write this cos theta as sine 90 minus theta. So we can write this as limit h tends to 0, 2 minus h whole square and this is sine pi by 2 minus pi upon 2 minus h upon h. Now this is limit h tends to 0, 2 minus h square and this is sine. Now this is 2 pi into pi will cancel so it will be this minus pi h upon 2 into 2 minus h and here we have this h. Now what we will do is we will multiply and divide everything with minus pi 2 into 2 minus h. So it will be this minus pi 2 into 2 minus h. Now this is standard limit 1. Here this value will be this 4 and here it is minus pi by 4. So this left hand derivative at 2 it is minus pi. Now we will find its right hand derivative at 2. Now we write f dash 2 positive it will be this limit h tends to 0 2 plus h mod of cos pi upon 2 plus h upon h. Now pi by 2 upon 2 plus h is less than pi by 2. So it is first quadrant. So it will be this limit h tends to 0 2 plus h cos pi upon 2 plus h by h. Now again we will change it in sign. So it will be this limit h tends to 0, 2 plus h and it will be this sine pi by 2 minus pi upon 2 plus h divide by h. Now this is limit h tends to 0 and this is 2 plus h, actually it is 2 plus h square all the way. And then it will be this sign pi h upon 2 into 2 plus h. Now this is h and again we will multiply and divide with pi upon 2 into 2 plus h. Now this is 1, this is 4 and this is pi by 4. So it's right hand derivative is pi. So left hand derivative is minus pi and right hand derivative is plus pi. So that means this function is not differentiable at x equal to 2. So answer to this question is differentiable at 0 but not differentiable at 2 and that's your option B. Now in B5 we are given this function which is defined as this improper integral from 1 upon x to infinite 1 upon t square cos t dt. Now in the first part for any x greater than 0 we need to show why this improper integral converges. Now we look for absolute convergence then we can write this mod fx will be less than or equal to this integral from 1 by x to infinite mod of 1 upon t square cos t dt and mod cos t is less than 1 so it will be less than or equal to this integral from 1 by x to infinite 1 upon t square dt. Now where this integral is minus 1 upon t from 1 by x to infinite so this is nothing but this is x. So clearly this integral it converges absolutely. So that's your first part and the second part says find f dash 1 upon pi if it exists and clearly indicate the basic results you are saying. Now we are given this function fx which is this integral from 1 upon x to infinite 
1 upon t square cos t dt. Now, if x is unequal to 0, we can use Newton Leibniz formula. So, we can write this as f dash x. Now, this is minus and it will be 1 by 1 upon x square cos 1 by x and here it will be minus 1 upon x square. Now this minus and minus it cancel and x square will also cancel. So we will get f dash x is cos 1 by x or we can write f dash 1 upon pi will be equal to cos pi and cos pi is minus 1. So answer to this part 2 is minus 1. Now this third part is using the hint or otherwise find this limit h tends to 0 positive f h minus f 0 upon h. Now in the question it says f 0 is 0. So basically we have to find limit h tends to 0 positive f h minus f 0 upon h and it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive 1 upon h. Now f 0 is from 1 upon x to infinite, 1 upon t square, cos t dt and f0 is 0. Now we will solve this question using by bar. So this is first function and this is a second function. Now we can write this as 1 upon h and here it will be 1 upon t square sin t and from 1 by h to infinite limit h tends to 0 and minus here will be this 1 by h from 1 upon h to infinite here will be minus 2 upon t cube and here will be this sin t dt now if we put t as infinite it will be 1 upon infinite and oxidative value minus 1 to 1 so it will be 0 so here we can write this as limit and it will be h sin 1 upon h and we can write this as 1 upon h and then this integral from 1 by h to infinite 2 sin t upon t cube dt and this is actually h tends to 0 positive. Now if h is 0, it will be 0 into sin infinite which is oxidating value minus 1 to 1. So this is 0 and we will prove that this integral it also converges to 0. Now again we will use absolute convergence. So we can write mod of 1 upon h this integral from 1 upon h to infinite 2 sin t upon t cube dt will be less than or equal to 1 upon h and then this integral 1 upon h to infinite mod 2 sin t upon t cube and again sin t is less than 1 so it will be less than 2 upon t cube dt. Now this is 1 by h and will be minus 1 upon t square from 1 by h to infinite. Now this is nothing but this is h and when h tends to 0 positive this integral also it approaches 0. So in this case this entire limit is simply 0.